Eyes, eyes, looking at the world through flies. Eyes, looking at the world through flies. Eyes, and you can just buzz off. <laughs> well, I think I'll buzz in the front door. I think I'll buzz around the back door screen. I think I'll buzz around your face. And then I'll land on the ceiling. <laughs> buzz, 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 buzz. <laughs> Soul fly. <laughs> well, I think I'll land on some horse manure. I think I'll land on the poop du jour. <laughs> Day. <laughs> I think I'll land on a squash possum, and then I'll land on your potato salad. <laughs> Just washing up. Because I'm looking at the world through flies' eyes, looking at the world through flies, eyes. looking at the world through flies. And you can just buzz off. And you can just buzz off. Hey, Bob. What? How you doing? I'm fine. Man, did I ever tell you that I went to Tom's Annie Gert's funeral, man? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I went there, you know, I was trying to be polite. You know, Tom was standing there by the body, weeping and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I was trying to say the right things, and, you know, I took a look at Ed and the girl, man. I said, man, you know, Tom, she looks so natural. Tom said, yeah, thanks a lot, T.C. She's in an urn. <laughs> 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 so then I think I made the real mistake, you know, because I was smoking a cigar, and I put some ashes on it. I said, look like Annie Gert's putting on some water. <laughs> Linda, lovely Linda, you have 44 inches I chew. Smuggle me with all your charms, those lovely things between your arms, oh Linda. I hit the track this time each year to gaze at both your hemispheres. Before the black and white flag falls, I'd love to palm your basketballs, oh Linda. Lovely Linda. Lovely Linda, lovely, lovely Linda. I win the race, I must deserve a squeeze between your Hindenburgs. I think of them as my best friends, the screaming Waldo's upper limbs, oh Linda. One dark and starry indie night, I came upon your twin headlights. They blinded me, I had to swerve. Your knockers were my dead man's curve, oh, Linda. Lovely Linda. Lovely Linda, lovely, lovely Linda. Each night I try to go to sleep. I count your orbs instead of sheep. I dreamed I saw you at the race. I woke with pillows in my face, oh Linda. Your ice cream cones I'd like to taste before they melt below your waist. Your title busty tried to strip. You're still our favorite by a nip, oh Linda. Lovely Linda. Lovely Linda, lovely, lovely Linda. Are we going to make that uh, phone call? Let's, oh. let's do that. All right. Who are you calling, Bob? I don't know. Just this number here. Oh. Um, anyway, let me give you that forecast. Oh. We are the Northside Travel Club. We thank you for your call. We are such merry fellows. We love you one and all. Please leave your name and phone number. We'll call you back with luck. But if you should hang up too soon, go take a flying. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh my. Dateline, West Hollywood, California. On October 3rd, 1988, 20-year-old Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis Presley, the late great king of rock and roll, was married to an unknown musician named Daniel Keough in a private ceremony in the so-called Church of Scientology. 
Six days later, Lisa Marie's mother, the King's ex-wife Priscilla, announced that Lisa Marie Presley is indeed expecting a child in the spring of 1989. And now with this musical tribute to the fertile couple, ladies and gentlemen, live from the grave, Elvex and the Little Kings. Well, the Graceland's rocking six feet above me And everybody's talking about my Lisa Marie She tied the knot, but was it really love? Uh -uh. Huh. She got knocked up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah Well, they had a little wedding for my princess bride I would have been invited if I hadn't have died I wish somebody would have dug me up, my little girl she got knocked up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah, well, please, won't you tell me, little Lisa Marie, why'd you find you a jerk into Scientology, did you marry him because he drove you out, or cause he got you, heavy with child, you got silly looks, but how can it be, well, every day you're looking more and more like me. And soon you'll be wearing a double D cup You get big huh, when you get knocked up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah Well, your belly's bloated so he gave you a ring And pretty soon I'll be the grandpa king Your husband and your kid are now in line To all cash in on the king's gold mine Now if I was alive, you know what I'd say Lisa Marie, now how'd you get this way? If I had any pride, you know I'd hang my head, but I can't. Huh. I'm already dead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, yeah. Well, well, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, you got knocked up. Huh. You guys know why Canadians do it doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> what's it? No, what, I don't. What, what's that again? Now? <laughs> you guys know why Canadians do it doggy style. No, Canadians I don't. Know why. So they can both watch the hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, with us, I should introduce our guest, John Fox is here, the comedian. Uh, now, winter weather this time. Last time you were here in the summer, would. Did you get out at all in Indianapolis? Or? Oh, yeah. Last last time I was here, I went to the zoo, Indianapolis Zoo. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Have you ever been there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you notice the animals there, pretty much like lost their killer instinct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this polar bear's got a look on his face like, hey, <laughs> beats Alaska. <laughs> Eat a couple marshmallows, wait to a couple kids, call it a day. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think we ought to put some pampers on those baboons. <laughs> <laughs> those guys have been lifting some heavy objects. Because <laughs> I like animals. I like animals. In fact, you know, I used to go to racetracks and stuff. But I'm not really very good at, at you know, at, I see. I don't know that much about horses. I know they got four legs, they give milk. That's about it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Last time I went, I, I bet a horse been a horse called Boy George. Mm -hmm. Found out it was a cow dressed like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Next race, I put my money on his horse called Perfect Gentleman. Mm -hmm. right? It's leading the race by five lengths, gets to the finish line, stops, turns around, and goes, After you? <laughs> <laughs> And then the last, last, I put my money on this horse called Illegal Alien. Uh, I know that sucker can run. He gets nosed out by Border Patrol. Something about a taillight being out or something. You know, so this is one commercial they got out now where the ladies come out and compare their hands for cash. Have you seen this one? This is ridiculous. The ladies, they come out and mm -mm. these are my hands, these are my mom's. Oh, sure, yeah. She's 30 years older, and I'll bet you can't tell. Mm -hmm. Let's cut it out. We're going to gamble. Let's take a look at those thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Lop those boobs out. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you can soak those in dove all day. <laughs> now, yesterday and today, our 
Peterson jam with newspapermen and hundreds of photographers from all over the nation, and these veterans agree with me that the city never has witnessed the excitement stirred by these youngsters from Liverpool who call themselves the Dino. <laughs> Right now, and again in the second half of our show, ladies and gentlemen, Vadino. <laughs> It's me on sitar. <laughs> of course it is. There once was a dog, or should I say a dinosaur. He's purple and red, runs in the house with Wilma and Fred. <laughs> he loves to play as he barks at the ring of the phone. <laughs> He knocks over things as he chomps on a 20-foot bone. <laughs> he knocks over Fred, licking his face, pumping his leg. <laughs> and Barney comes by, and on a whim, Dino jumps him. <laughs> this is me and Sitar. Of course it is. Thought this was the Dino's time. I said it in this session. <laughs> <laughs> he is the fifth Dino. That's I right. forgot. Betty and Wilma just laugh at the horny hubbub. Horny hubbub. Till Bam Bam walks over to KO <laughs> the beast with a club. <laughs> But his shot is off, and so instead, he KOs Fred. <laughs> Fred will be okay, he squirms and moans on the Flintstones. Ladies and gentlemen, Dino. <laughs> I'm Casey Kissam, coming to you live from Hollywood with another edition of America's Bottom 40. Brought to you by the Oxy-5 Company's newest acne medication, Oxymoron 5, for pimple-free teenagers. <laughs> and so it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be a little quicker on the tape, boys. That's a good joke. We've got the worst songs in America, and we're counting them down. Record stores are selling them. <laughs> For some unknown reason, you're buying them, and I'm using them as coasters. First, let's review the top three songs on the charts. At number three, Guns N' Roses is singing Sweet Child of Mine. Well, if I had a child around the house today, I'd have these four words for lead guitarist Slash and his cohorts. Stay the hell away. <laughs> and number two, Huey Lewis says, there ain't no living in a perfect world. And especially not for you, Huey, since you don't speak proper English. <laughs> and at number one, George Michael sings, he's got a monkey on his back. Well, I would imagine it's getting a little crowded back there, George. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you probably don't mind. <laughs> and by the way, George, there are these remarkable shaving instruments called razors. Buy one and lose that silly ass earring. <laughs> Other songs on the charts. The band Johnny Hates Jazz with I Want to Be a Hero is moving down on the charts, and deservedly so. <laughs> Apparently, Johnny also hates music. <laughs> Homer. 
You know, you play that, you know, and I hate to sound like a Scrooge, but I used to work in a department store, and I used to sit there for an eight-hour shift and have to listen to that Muzak Christmas tape over and over, mm -hmm. and they would play the single most annoying song known to man. You all know that song I'm talking that song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. <laughs> now, first off, guys, I don't believe this song. I can't believe that anybody is this into birds. <laughs> All right, think about it, Tom. On the seventh day alone, this guy's getting seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge. That's 23 birds. <laughs> Who is this man? Alfred Hitchcock? <laughs> By the twelfth day, he's accumulated forty-two swans are swimming, forty-two geese are laying, thirty-six calling birds, thirty French hens, twenty-two turtle doves, and twelve partridges. <laughs> now I hope this man's got a newspaper subscription. <laughs> consideration those geese are a laying <laughs> some of those eggs will be a hatching <laughs> hey and if that's not bad enough come the eighth day they start sending in show business people <laughs> yeah ladies dancing drummers drumming pipers pipers lords are leaping <laughs> show business they're used to working around the holidays <laughs> but what about those poor maids of milking <laughs> they ought to be home with their family on christmas not yanking on a cow <laughs> i can see him sitting there on their stool he brings in one more stinking bird <laughs> and i'll be damned if i'm picking those pears <laughs> how'd that go again well it's a it's an old uh, Eskimo trick uh, of how to uh, catch a polar bear. Now, you, what you do is you go cut a hole in the ice, right? right, And then you take little peas and you place them strategically four inches apart all the way around the hole, right? And a polar bear will crawl up and he'll look at it in very much curiosity as what is going on there. Now, when he bends over to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. <laughs> 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 it's true. Sean Mori is our guest, and uh, Sean is a multi talented individual, and he's got his banjo out. We get it's doing a favor to learn a tune. A chicken farmer went out one dark and windy day. By the coop he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a rotten egg hit him in the eye, it was the sight he dreaded. Ghost chickens in the sky. <laughs> the farmer had raised chickens since he was 24, working for the colonel for 30 years or more, killing all those chickens and sending them to fry. Now they want revenge. Ghost chickens in the sky. Everybody. were black and shiny, their eyes were burning red. They had no meat or feathers, these chickens were dead. They picked the farmer up, and he died by the claw. They cooked him extra crispy, <laughs> and ate him with coleslaw. Finally, researchers at the University of Florida say women can ward off yeast infections by tossing their underwear into the microwave and cooking it. Now, one word of warning, the process only works on your cotton panties, ladies, and would likely make nylon briefs go kaboom. Tuna helper again, dear? <laughs> I would suggest not using the browning element. <laughs> we take a trip to Whiskeyville to visit Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey, frontier dumb little kid. Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey's father, Doggy Daddy Whiskey, <laughs> wanted to uh, teach his boy a lesson because he was doing a lot of stupid things. So one summer's day, he gave him $5. He said, now, go out on the town and buy $5 worth of what's what. And Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey didn't even think to ask him what 
what's what was, and just took the five dollars and, and took off. Soon he came to a department store. He walked in. He says, uh, excuse me, sir. He says, uh, I'd like to buy five dollars worth of what's what. And the guy said, what? And he said, what's what? He said, listen, kid, if you don't know what you want, just get out of here. So he left. Walked into a pharmacy. Excuse me, Mr. Pharmacist, but I'd like to buy five dollars worth of what's what. He said, what? He said, what's what? He said, listen, little kid, if you don't know what you want, just get the heck out of here. So he left. Went to a grocery store. Excuse me, Mr. Grocer, but uh, I got five dollars here. I want to buy five dollars worth of what's what. I said, what? I got five dollars here. I want to buy five dollars worth of what's what. I said, what? He said, what's what? He says, ah, this dumb little kid. He says, I'm going to have some fun with this little kid. So he says, hey, uh, little boy, why don't you go across the street there? There's a brothel across the street. So go over there. They probably got what's what. And so Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey Frontier Dumb Little Kid takes his five dollars. He walks across the street to the brothel. Knocks on the door. Woman opens the door. Completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey never saw a woman's private parts before. Mm-hmm. He says, well, 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 what's that? And she said, what's what? He said, that's great. Give me five dollars worth. <laughs> And that's it. Another exciting episode of Jimmy Mad Dog Whiskey. Frontier. Dumb little kid. Haji's song for Busty Bell and her fabulous 50s. Busty, Busty, give me your answer to. Would you mind if I went to you? Special guest, Randy Gandhi. He's a Randy Gandhi. It's we say Randy. Randy Gandhi. Randy Gandhi. Randy Gandhi. The answer is. The answer is sputum samples. Sputum samples. Exactly. Mm. The question. What do you call someone who's a spitting image of junior samples? <laughs> The answer is yes. Kenmore Weed Whacker. <laughs> Kenmore Weed Whacker. It's oh no. What did Barbie yell as she made love with Ken in the tool shed? <laughs> <laughs> The answer is I, sir. I, sir. I, sir. I, sir. Yes. The question. Tough envelope. What does the coat girl say to Sammy Davis right after she says hat, sir? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Stevie Nicks. Stevie, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. What happens when Stevie Wonder tries to shave himself? <laughs> hey, you, get off my yacht. A Belgian woman was thrown off a yacht and in shark-infested waters because she apparently refused to take a bath for several days. At least that's what the skipper told police. Frederick Stoops, 30, says at the time she was wearing only panties and spent two days on a deserted island before swimming for 13 hours to the Australian mainland some 14 kilometers away. Miss Stoops will not press charges because she cannot speak English properly. <laughs> Police said all she wanted was her passport back. Really? The only problem was they threw overboard. They could get the smell out of the fish. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> Join us again at 8 o'clock for our last day at work. Thank you. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Dinos on Community 5. Dinos and Crops, is that it? Yeah. <clears throat> See the nympho dancing in the window. I love to watch as she shakes her behind. I walk up and meet her on the doorstep. She kneels down and I suddenly find dirty knees <laughs> making me feel fine. The thing that she's going is not mine. <laughs> rose beef tender, rose beef rare, meat loaf with grit on the side. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what the mating call of a southern bell is? <laughs> uh, no, what, what is it? Woo, I've had too much to drink. <laughs> Bob is wearing a shirt featuring the seal of the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says, it's 1816 at the bottom, and then it shows a, a, it's sort of like a, a, a bad buffalo. drawing of a buffalo jumping over a log. The, uh, mm -hmm. landscaping, the landscape scene with the sun rising. And then there's uh, a little, instead of having the guy there with the hoe, it's got a guy <laughs> shooting baskets. <laughs> That's the great state of Indiana. <laughs> That's because if you can shoot baskets, you get all the hoes you want. <laughs> Little Alan Mario, Sullivan and Mears, the most important actor is, is having ice cold beers. Last May I did not see the race, I sleep when the beer is gone. I had this dream you won't believe about a whipped cream and Linda Vaughn. At the race, race, in the month of May, come to the race, race. In the month of May, come to the race. At six o'clock, they raise the gate for your beer in the Dixie Cups. The homemade sign that I have made says, show us your snuggle pups. The infield bathrooms are horrible. Just ask my girlfriend, Sally. Last year, she could not find the John, so he peed in gasoline alley. Oh, at the race, race. In the month of May, come to the race, race. In the month of May, come to the race. Uh, I cannot believe the king is here. Can you do? I can't believe no, it. I can't believe oh, it. Oh, man, I'll tell you, I've been hanging out at the track, man. Really? It's been unbelievable hip out there, man. I'll really? tell you, I'm going to teach some of these foreign drivers how to talk, though. Really? Yeah, man. I was in the food line the other day behind uh, Emerson Fittipaldi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's up there babbling this gibberish about about 15 minutes. I finally touched him on the shoulder. I said, Emo, I said, you get a corn dog and get the hell out of the king's way, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll get kind of hungers down here waiting on you, man. And I can't be waiting on that, boys. I, I tell you, man, I, I cannot believe the king is here. I, I can't believe it. I love going to the Speedway, man. I love it out there, man. Always, always sitting in grandstand E. <laughs> <laughs> they named a grandstand after me. They should have named a row, because that's what it takes for me to sit down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. I tell you, I love going out there, and I know you guys do too, man. I tell you what I love to do is go out there real early on race morning, man. Mm -hmm. And we play this little drinking game. Yeah. And you have to take a drink every time Tom Carnegie makes a mistake over the PA. <laughs> 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 I'll never forget one morning, man. Back in the early 80s when Joyce DeWitt from that show Three's Company was on there. Yeah. yeah. And Tom kept saying she was from the show Three's a uh, Company. <laughs> <laughs> All morning, man. <laughs> By 10 o'clock, the king was about dead. I lied, man. <laughs> I'm saying, Tom, get a day job, baby. Leave me alone. <laughs> You don't have to be one time for something out there. <laughs> I'm afraid that. What? I got to tell you, man. What is it, King? Uh, one time, me and Priscilla was out at the Speedway, man. So I'm believe we walking along, and this here pigeon flew over and dropped a big load right in Priscilla's eye. Oh, no, oh, no. Uh, she looked at me, she says, King. Because that's my name. <laughs> she says, <laughs> She says, King, can you get me some toilet paper? I said, what for, baby? That bird's a half a mile away right now. Thank you, Robert. Robert. <clears throat> they're silly and they're jerky, competitive and quirky. They come from Albuquerque, the Unser family. <laughs> Oh, Bobby's kind of mopey. Big Al is really dopey. His son looks just like Opie, <laughs> the Unser family. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I still don't know. <laughs> Ask anyone you see, oh, who's racing's finest trio. The answer's gonna be, oh. The Unser family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sitting in the morning sun. I'll be there when the evening comes. Oh, watch the golden bozos roll in. And I'll watch them 
I'm rolling out again. Uh -huh. Sitting on my van at the track, rooting for AJ, tanning my back. Uh -huh. Sitting on my van at the track, drinking beer. Yeah. I left my home in Beach Grove, drove around on Highway 465. Uh -huh. Just show me off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sitting on my van at the track. I hold my breath when I whiz in the shack. Oh, oh. Sitting on my van at the track. Drinking beer. I hear Jim Neighbors sing his song. Is it lonely now that Rock Hudson's gone? Oh, die. When we leave, I'll ask my girlfriend to drive. Oh, sitting on my van at the track, banging my baby on a luggage rack. Oh, sitting on my van at the track, drinking baby.